thought it would be fun to show you a little delightful surprise I had um, when testing this machine out. So what I realized is um, there is definitely a distinct advantage with an oscillating hook as opposed to a complete rotary hook when doing free motion embroidery. Hence why you often see people on the old straight stitch uh, class 15 machines doing a lot of embroidery. <clears throat> One of the big advantages is if when you're stitching really heavy fabric and uh, heavy embroidery, when the needle goes through, what happens is if it misses the stitch, partly, if it misses a stitch with an oscillating hook, the thread just goes in and out and pulls up and there's no problem. With a rotating hook, sometimes it, it gets pulled halfway around and you end up with this sort of th three um, fingered loop. And that happens quite often when it misses a stitch, but it just doesn't do that with an oscillating hook. So it makes it a little easier when you're doing some of these complicated um, patterns and heavy duty patterns. It works fine in both, but I found the oscillating hook is actually a little easier to do complex embroidery for hours on end. Just different experience. But what I thought would be fun was to see if the Kenmore 1914 158.1914 that I've got here would embroider very well. Um, as you can see here, there's quite a bit of green, which I've done before and uh, now I'm working on the gold for a Christmas runner and I found out that this machine does it very well. Now I've just got the, put, the foot on here at the moment just because I'm doing very simple things like that and it just makes it a little easier to keep the fabric um, low. But the other thing which surprised me about this machine is let me take this out here, snip and put the foot on what I thought would be a real problem on this machine was this strange shape. So, let me see if I've got a ruler or something I can demonstrate this better. Yeah, this will do. If you look, maybe that's not so good. If, yes, that, that works. If you look here, you'll see there's a big slope here. But it's a little flatter in the back. I thought with this design, it would be a real problem doing free motion embroidery on this machine. However, what I soon discovered was this design works to the advantage because there's you're not getting caught on anything. So I'll explain and show you what I mean. So quite often what happens with an embroidery hoop is when you're, you're pushing the hoop along, it will get caught on an edge or something. So a lot of times you put a, a, a piece of plastic down or something to help it slip. However, but because of the design of this machine, when you're free motioning embroidery, embroidery on it, it's actually way above the level of where it meets. Now I know I've got this set in a different machine, but either way that's going to happen you're going to have a gap because the machine is actually a good shape like a mountain. But what it means up here where you're actually doing the work and because when you're doing free motion embroidery you're, you're usually holding the, and directing always concentrating on the area around the needle. This area around the needle is elevated and perfectly under the hoop. So it's very close and gives it a really good secure foundation and it's easy to move around through all the, uh, the areas of the hoop. So I found this machine is, even though I thought it would be a disaster, it's really good for free motion embroidery. Now one of the awkward things about needle position, but of course you can cheat and use the, the cam lever and cam setting to move it over the left. But the other thing I've been experimenting with is looking at the placement of the zigzag depending on which particular buttonhole setting you use. So, because you have a right and a left side of the buttonhole, that changes your the location of the zigzag. 
And what I realize is if you use the right side of the where it says R, so it's reversing instead of forwarding, but on, if you use the reverse side, the R here, it actually puts the zigzag more in the center of the foot, which makes it a little easier. Now if you're like me, because this is a smaller machine compared to the big one, my Conso, you can actually use the F side to get the zigzag more on the left side. So that helps a bit as well to try and use every ounce of space you can under the machine. And the other thing, of course, which is great about this machine is the needle bar area is very small and that's quite a high shank, so it's quite easy to get hoops under here and to get close in the spaces you need when you're doing free motion embroidery. The only thing I wish was a bit more, a tiny bit more space in the under the needle so it was easier to get the hoop under there, but that's a minor issue. So I thought I'd give you a little demonstration. Now I'm using this foot, it's, it's just set with zero foot pressure, it just helps the fabric to not get pulled up when it's working hard. Um, but I will show you how it works. Now I have my magic um, foot controller on here, the, the one with the um, lamp um, resistor to avoid the, f the foot pedal getting hot because when you're doing this kind of work for a long time it will really get hot but it doesn't get hot at all doing this and I did all of that last night hours of time. I've just re-oiled my machine today because of course I've hit the eight hours of sewing non-stop and it's heavy duty sewing as you're doing all of this. So the machine is ready to go. So I've zoomed in now let's go. So I'll just make sure everything is in the right place. Yeah. So you can see... There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've got my um, lamp controller Set so that this speed here is maximum speed, which means when I'm doing this kind of work, that foot controller is not going to get hot at all. So I'm literally sewing at full speed now. Um, now I'll demonstrate that it works just fine, of course, without the foot. Um, same different. Trim. Okay, I've re-threaded the machine. That's most one of the most common areas of guilty of guilt is that sometimes the, the curly nature of the embroidery thread causes uh, problems with the machine. Okay, I've changed the needle. Let's see if this cooperates. It's always the way with videos. It worked perfectly until you get on the video and then you can embarrass yourself extremely. It's not... Who's grumbling of it? It's not as smooth from the bobbin areas. I'm guessing. It's operating a bit more. Sometimes you can get red wrapped around the, the bobbin area and that 
cause his problems after he had a thread breaker. Although I must admit it's, it seems to be cooperating now. Try so I might have recovered. So let's do the next one. <clears throat> so we'll do this line up. You'll see it works very well. And the general shape of working on. Faster. Okay. No. Shoot this. I don't need it anymore. And just, oops. Put the zigzag up. Make sure I know where the zigzag is going to zigzag. So I find don't try and do your complete satin stitch in one go. It, it's always better to go over it a couple times. Yeah, now it's sounding like it should. So I must have had it threaded wrong and I needed a new needle. It's good to just turn it to zero and then a few stitches in the same place, lock them, pull up a bit of thread, and on to the next bit. Turn on the zigzag, and then off we go.
So we've now got miles and miles and miles of just continuing around to finish this work. see the lines but I have drawn on it you can almost probably see a bit of the, the, the light blows up the image a bit um, but basically you just keep on going but you can see the machine does fantastically well beautiful stitches of course and uh, very reliable so delighted to find it. that's another one of my excellent choices in machines is providing continued rewards surprises and joys anyway I hope you have have a, a wonderful happy Christmas and uh, we look forward to more sewing projects in the new year. Bye for now.